Okay, here we go. So hi everyone, uh, welcome back to our Digital Nomads World Weekly Lecture. Um, I'm Becca and I'll be your host. And today I am talking with Jose um, from Bansko Lab. And firstly, we're gonna start the conversation by us welcoming Jose and asking him, um, where are you calling in from today? And just tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you're from and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm right now in Bansko, in Bansko Lab, precisely. Uh, I was born in Colombia. I was raised in the Netherlands. Um, and my mom was a kind of an old school nomad. So I, I lived in Curaçao before. I lived in Venezuela before. I lived in many places. And then we ended up in, in the Netherlands where I was raised and I studied and I grew up. Okay. So um, I guess where did your journey begin um, into the kind of digital nomad? I know you've said before that you don't necessarily see um, yourself as a digital nomad, but um, I guess tell us a little bit about how your journey began and when you started founding your or setting up your businesses. Yeah, um, I started my business very early, like. In, in business, in terms of trying to get money by myself, right? Uh, it started when I was 12 in Colombia. I remember one time I, I, I asked my family for a bunch of phones that they were not using. And I put up a table in a corner somewhere in Colombia in a, um, um, in a plaza, which is called like that. Um, and I started to sell uh, minutes so people could call and they would pay me for every minute. That was my first... Um, that was my first business. And then uh, we went to the Netherlands, I started to study and I was always interested in technology, the phones, computer. And then when I was 16, I started freelancing uh, as a developer. And um, yeah, I just went from freelancing to having a business while I was studying. And that is my company was who, and that company grew to a company that is giving a job to five people. Um, and I'm really happy with that because um, it was always my dream to be able to, to provide, right? To, to be able to have something out there that helps people that, um, and it's a nice work environment and all that stuff. So it started when I was very young. Uh, and right now I have more time to do projects like Bounce Call App, um, which is something I'm very excited about. Um, yeah, because of, of kids and digital, right? My background was me being a kid and trying to get into computers and seeing that there's a lot of opportunities there. And now that I'm here in Bansko or in many places where I see that not all the kids have the possibility to, to go into a computer to start learning, this is something that I'm really passionate about and I want to, to, to move forward. So I guess when you started as a developer and set up your own business, Wasso, right? Um, was yeah. that back in the Netherlands? That's, yeah, that's correct. And then from that, um, kind of COVID was a bit of a catalyst for you for beginning your journey. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of how this was a big transition for you and how it kind of sparked a new journey for you? Yeah, that was a, that was a weird situation. So I think there is a before COVID me and after COVID me in the next, Netherlands, I was super focused on growing my company and working every day and like uh, no sleeping, right? Like the, the mentality of sleeping is bad and you should be working, working, working. And then COVID happened. And um, I remember one day like the, the, in the news, the whole thing came up and uh, like we have to all go in a, in a serious lockdown and you ha we have to close the office and we have to go home. Yeah. And I was building a camper van as a side project in the weekends. I, I just I just like to camp and stuff like that. And I remember me sitting there and thinking like, oh my God, am I going to be staying home all the time? That's not something I can do. Like I, ha I, I can't. I can't be home. I can just sit down. So uh, <laughs> I finished the van, which was not in a stage of for travel. It was not ready for travel. So yeah. I finished the thing super fast. I put a fridge uh put a lot of secondhand stuff in there and i was like you know what let's let's go to bulgaria 
and and it was this this whole thing was so rushed that I traveled from the Netherlands to Bulgaria without a passport or an ID because I forgot my wallet in home and I discovered that I didn't have my wallet when I was almost in the border from Germany. So I was I, I was already I already crossed whole Netherlands and Germany. I was like I'm not going back. Um, so I just I was just like I keep driving and I see where I come and then I, I spoke with the police and I'm like you know my my wallet is coming, but it will arrive in Bulgaria. I have proof that I, I have an idea. I have a picture of my ID. Can you let me like pass? And funny, yeah, I passed. I I, I came to Bulgaria and I started to travel here and my wallet arrived and all the stuff. So that that's how rushed I was to 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 get out of the Netherlands and. After COVID, yeah, I started to travel and enjoy life more and and understanding a lot of stuff. Uh, there is so so many things that are more important for me now that I discovered while traveling, right? Uh, yeah. People, time, nature. Um, I don't know, helping someone. And that is something that I will never be able to understand if I never, if COVID never happens. So in a way, I'm very thankful for that. Of course, it's it's a bad situation where all uh, a lot of people are dying, and um, it's a bad situation. But there is a positive side for me, at least, on yeah. the whole COVID thing. So I guess it's kind of a bit about your the pre life before, and then kind of what <laughs> happened during COVID. So um, I guess why. Why did you choose to stay in Bansko or what was the reason for kind of, um, I guess, set, choosing that as a location to kind of resettle in? Um, so I travel whole Bulgaria. I spent six months traveling Bulgaria and Bulgaria is beautiful. There are so many places where I will stay. But in Bansko, Bansko is very unique. There is a lot of nomads here living here. There is a lot of people who, who have a certain mindset that I really appreciate. They want to, they, they love this place and they want to see it grow. Um, there, is, there is some really, something weird happening in Bansk and, and you have been here. I think you understand mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. This place is magical um, and that got me. But the, the, the other thing that got me is when I was traveling, I found some land. I, I think it's seven kilometers from Bansko or something like that. And I started building a cabin. Um, and then I found a dog there. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine here. I'm not going back. My plan was never to stay here. I was just, I, I thought I will travel. The whole COVID situation will pass. And um, I'll, I'll go back home and I will work harder for all the time that I, that I, that I took off, right? But no, I'm still here. Um, I'm still building that cabin and, and my dog is bigger than he was. Um, <laughs> I think it's Bansko. Bansko is a weird place. You should, yeah. uh, if you have never been to Bansko, you should try it. <laughs> um, so I guess after you've kind of decided that that's where you want to be and you're kind of placing your roots there, um, at what point did you decide to set up Bansko Lab or was there kind of a catalyst did you see like something in the community that um, made you feel like you needed to do this it was not planned it was not planned sorry I don't I don't see you just just saying it I don't see you so it's a black screen so I don't really know where to make eye contact with so if, if my eyes are going all over a place it's just because I see a black screen don't um, worry, you're it's all good <laughs> Going back to your question, uh, it was it was the same as me going and traveling. Uh, it was a, a random thing that happened. I was in this community and I was in all the the, play, the working spaces and um, they're they're all amazing. Like this is a village or a small town, and there is so many working spaces. There is so many facilities for all the nomads, which is crazy, right? In such a small place. Uh, but at, at the same time, I saw there was not really a place where we can all get together and um, and not being part of something, at least. Um, in my opinion, you need to be in one of the co-working spaces or in one of the places to be able to, to, to go with that community. So I thought, 
Um, I like I like to, to create a place where everyone can come together and it should be like a lab, right? Because that's that's Bansko for me. Bansko is a place where I can try things out, where I can just um, try it out and it, it it's going to be cheap because Bansko is super cheap. It's going to be raw because Bulgaria is very raw. The laws are not as in the Netherlands or Germany or, or um, America. It's, it's easier. So that's why I created Bounce Club because I thought let's create a place where everyone can, can do their own thing and everyone can just try out stuff and see what happens. And, um, and yeah, that's the idea of Bounce Collab and also giving something back to the community, right? Going back to myself, technology was always there for me. So I want to create a place where we give something back to the community. Digital inclusion is so important for me. Right now, there's half the world which is not online just because it's too expensive to, to have internet. And um, I think that's Bounce Collab. It's a place where kids can experiment, uh, bigger kids can experiment. Um, e everyone can do their own thing. That was That is the idea of Bounce Collab. And it was random. I, I, I never planned it. Um, a Bulgarian friend of mine that I met the first day that I came to Bansko, I was parked somewhere in a in a random field in, in Bansko and this guy comes to me with a bunch of tomatoes, older guy, around 70 year old, and he start uh, knocking on my window and I'm like, wow, I'm parked maybe on his on his place, on his property, like I opened the door and he was like, here, tomatoes for you, my friend. I've been to the Netherlands uh, when I was younger. How are you? And we started a conversation and um, we became really good friends. And one day he just comes to me and he's like, I have this place which has been empty for more than five years. Would you like to do something with it? And I remember I came with a Dutch friend and we were like, oh my God, this is huge. Uh, this is empty and this is in a super good position. We should do something with this. Uh, and I just rented and started something. And that, that is Bansko Lab. So for those um, that don't know what Bansko Lab is, um, can you tell everyone exactly what Bansko Lab is and what you do, what your mission is? Bansko Lab is a cafe. So at, at least that's what, what, what we call it. Uh, but the, the idea of Bansko Lab is a place where a lot of stuff happen um, that will gather nomads, that will sh for sharing knowledge, for experimenting stuff. So it's a cafe. It's basically just a big cafe where you can just buy a coffee, drink tea. Downstairs, there is a club, which we are building right now um, to have some parties and have fun, of course. Uh, Sundays, we learn kids Python. Um, programming completely free. Um, the month of January, we're doing a kind of a kickstart month entrepreneurial thing where we just share knowledge, where we just uh, experiment things and work together. You can be here, you don't have to pay to be here. You can, you can do your own events if you want. I always say the place is for all of us. So if you want to, to do something or create something, just use the place as you want. Um, and that is Bounce Collab. It, it, at the end of the day, it's a cafe. But um, yeah, there is more happening here than just drinking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's a, it's a non-profit that you're running. Um, so Absolutely, how yeah. exactly do you fund it? Um, are you able to access community funding or are you funding it from your businesses, from your other work? Uh, so yeah, so yeah, not yet. I don't have any funding. And the only thing that is maintaining this place is my company, Wasu. Um, and why? Because my company wants to invest uh, in, in this, in, 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 in digital inclusion. This is something very important for, for me and the company. And of course, it's, it's not my money at the end of the day, it's the money of the company, because at, at one point, a company is not anymore uh, you or your bank account. So the way how I am trying to put this for the company or how I am putting this for the company is um, digital inclusion. How do we get kids to learn how to program? How do we create an environment where kids can come here and, and just use a computer? We bought a bunch of Raspberry Pis. We're going to start doing some projects with, with the kids. We're going to create a tech fair where, um, where we show what the kids are learning, right? And um, 
And uh, so, something I'm actually very excited about is we have a lot of um, female kids here, which is something very, very rare in, in my profession, right? In development is um, the majority are always males. And we see a lot of younger um, kids and females here doing this. And that is something so amazing. And um, that is that is what my company is funding. But at the end of the day, the result is something we're very happy with. So we, I, I need to see if there is an European fund or something that will help. Uh, but I prefer at this point to have more people interested, to have more nomads helping us with the kids. That is what, what I need most right now, the most right now. And um, I guess you, you said earlier, kind of it's a space for collaboration for locals and for nomads. Um, have you seen a lot of digital nomad families using the space? Yeah, so many, um, a lot. Every Sunday, if you, if you come here on a Sunday, you will see this place full of kids, digital family, digital nomad families, uh, majority travel in a camper van uh, with like five kids, six kids. Um, and just, yeah, they are, they are trying this type of stuff because they don't believe in the school system, which is something I don't believe in as well. Uh, and they just come and they just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's magical what happens. A lot of kids showing what they know and learning new stuff and it's completely the opposite of the school system. But yeah, a lot of nomad families, a lot of them, and and they find Bansko a perfect place to raise their kids. It's safe. It's the food is amazing. I mean, the Sunday market here where all the babas grow their, grow their food is it's cheap. Um, it's an amazing environment to grow their kids, and a lot of families are here. Uh, yes. And do you, I guess um, you mentioned earlier about running different kind of events and things like that. Um, have you been running special events for local kids and for nomad families? Are there lots where they kind of cross over or do you focus more on the kind of local teaching? Very good question. And that's something um, really very difficult. It's very difficult to get the local community because of the language um and bulgarians are very shy i don't want to generalize but in 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 the the experience we have is that the majority are very shy and even though they try i mean and, and when i say the local community that that i want to approach are um the gypsy community for example which is a community i believe they're extremely smart it's just the environment is is not a healthy environment because I know such environment. I've been in, in the same in Colombia, like being smart or trying to do tech stuff is not cool, right? So uh, it's really difficult to, to show off that, you, that you're able to, to program on a computer or that you like technology. And reaching that community has been extremely difficult. Even though we've tried, last time we built a robot here uh, with that community, but as soon as the, the nomad kids, which are kids, with had all the freedom in the world, right? They they are very extrovert and they are full of energy. As soon as these two combine, the 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 local community gets very shy and just take a step back. And that's something we're trying to to improve. And we really need to see how we do this. And this is a challenge. But at the end of the day, um, it's a challenge that when we when we are able to to solve it, we'll have kids. Uh, from the local community playing with these nomad kids and at the same time trying to speak a language and or the nomad kids are going to learn bulgarian or the local community are going to learn english so it's a uh, it's worth trying and i guess for the um for the teaching aspect or for the kind of like skill shares um are you relying mostly on kind of digital nomads that are in the area to volunteer their skills and kind of show the kids how it's done? Or are you getting in kind of specialists to help with certain subject areas and development things? At the moment, it's just me. Um, at the moment, it's just me and, 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 the, and the parents. The parents are doing an amazing job. A lot of the parents are learning how to program, which is, which is really funny. <laughs> uh, you see, they come for the kids and, and they are the ones asking questions. 
question, but how do I do this if I, if I was trying home to, to build this thing and uh, can you can you show me? So the parents and, and the kids and everyone, which everyone, if, if you're in Bansko and you have something to show, it doesn't have to be technology. It can be any any skill. Please come on Sundays from, from, from 2 uh, p.m. We're here and everyone can just come and just, the kids are playing, the kids are doing their stuff. And if you want to show a skill or something, just, just show up and, and, and try it. That's, that's what I would say. And what do you see uh, for the future of Bansko Lab? What is the long-term vision? Yeah, so the long-term vision is the, the tech fair. That is, that is something important. And I believe if we have a group of 15 kids, local kids, who are very interested in technology, from age seven to 16, something like that. And we get them into programming, right? We get them into this, this, this magical world um, of technology. In 10 years, these kids are gonna be doing amazing stuff. And Bulgaria don't have a lot of unicorns. Bulgaria don't have a, a, a massive um, startup scene. Everything happens in Sofia. But what, what is gonna happen if in 10 years, all this, what is happening here, all these kids who are starting to program, just start to do their own stuff, right? They start to do their own startups, they start to solve problems. And I like to call it the Balkan Valley. Um, this is an investment in, in 10 years. I want to see Bansko in 10 years when, when the kids are, are, are teaching other kids, when the kids are not moving to Sofia or are not going away from Bansko to find a job because it's fine, it's just fine here. There is opportunities, the tech scene is amazing, companies are coming to, to Bulgaria more, and there's university campus in Bansko. Um, I, I believe when that happens, um, Bansko Lab and what we're doing here, uh, that is our mission. Those in, in 10 years to see what, what this will do. So I guess, um, what have been your uh, biggest uh, rewards with what you've set up so far my biggest reward in what in what terms can you specify i guess what's been most rewarding from setting up bansko lab for yourself um i don't know um so many things seeing the seeing the nomad community here from different spots people who don't know each other but are living here in bansko already six seven months Seeing, talking to each other and creating collaborations, that, that's been very reward, rewarding. Seeing the kids, um, the, like, because we're working in Turtle, which is a program where you can draw in Python. So you have to do to code in order for the Turtle to like move around and, and draw something. And the first lesson is, is create a house. And like the houses, they, they, they don't really look like a house, but they, but they try. The second lesson you see when they learn loops and all that stuff, it starts to look like art. And then after a while, you see these amazing things. Like you go and you see the art, right? This is visual. It's not just code. You see you, there is an output. And then you see what these kids are making. And then you're like, oh my God, how are they so smart? This took me so long. And, and that is very rewarding. It's very rewarding to see... Um, to see uh, females in programming, very interested. It's it's amazing. This is something we should do more. We should create an environment where uh, where women are happy to be in technology, and that has been very rewarding as well. I think yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so we're gonna take a few questions from the audience now. Um, so if you have any questions, send them over. Um, the first one we have is. Um, so you mainly teach programming. Would you say programming um, is the is the only way to become financially independent as um, a digital nomad? Would you say it's a good way? Not at all. It's a it, uh, there's a lot of work in there, but it's not the only way. And um, I mean, in, in in general technology, there is so many things happening in technology. I mean, I, I think the digital world is quite important if you want to be a digital nomad, of course, because you want to work from a laptop. Uh, but there's so many things. There's an example of someone I know who, who make book covers um, for a very small uh, uh, 
um, how do you call this? The, the, the place where they create the book. Um, publisher? Publisher, yeah. Book covers. It, there's a lot of old people working there and they don't really have a lot of imagination or, I mean, their, their job is done. They just, they just want to, to be done with it and they just want to stop. And, and, and design is something, is something that is constantly moving, right? So I know that the, the, the book cover industry, all that, that industry need new eyes, fresh eyes. And that is something that translates to the, to the offline world because I need to be printed. There's not a lot of people and that's a niche. I think it's important to, to search for a niche, search for something that not everyone is doing. I mean, programming is, is, is not really a niche, but there is just a lot of work and we don't have enough hands. But um, I don't think that's the only way. I don't think that's the only way. It's a good way. It's an easy way. But there's so many things. Hosting. My, my, my business is the hosting business. And you, you need to know some cybersecurity, but IT support, IT support is so necessary in my business. And that's something we don't have a lot. You need to be somehow uh, know a little bit about computers and tech, but you don't need to be programming. You need to have more people skills. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, another question is, um, do you think you could set up such a program in other Balkan countries? Or do you have any plans to expand like Bansko Lab in other Balkan countries? Maybe in the future. For now, I mean, I'm happy to, to share all the knowledge that we, we get here in Bansko Lab if someone else wants to do something else in another, another place. But for now, I, I just want to focus here in, in Bansko. Uh, and there is a lot of programs who who help you set up something like this. Color Dojo, for example, is one of those. Uh, they give you all the resources. They give you everything you need to know on how to, to teach kids how to program. And um, I think it was Albert Einstein who said, if you're not able to explain to a seven-year-old kid, you don't know enough about the subject. So it's it's also good if you're learning how to program. Just Just go and and try to teach the kids, right? I mean, mm -hmm. um, I don't know anything about Python because PHP is my profession and cybersecurity. I, I, I am spe I specialized in cybersecurity and I want to learn Python. So I am learning Python with the kids. We, are, we, are, we, are, we go in a room and we all try to just understand how Python works. So for anyone who is trying to learn how to program, just maybe try to teach some kids and see if you, if you learn easier and better and, and in a funnier way so yeah not for now for now just bounce go but i'm happy to help anyone who wants to to set up something like this do you think if um if someone was or if, if yourself or if someone else was interested in setting up a similar program in other balkan countries um such as you know albania or, do you think it would be as successful as it has been in bansko I think the, the, the important factors for something like this is, one, do you have a community around it? We have a, a big community here in Bansko. Um, again, we have all the co-working spaces around us. That's important. It's important that there is a place where people want to um, collaborate and, do, and make an open source thing. Open source is important. Uh, look at all, like the open source mentality is, is huge. People... I don't want people to see Bansko Lab and put my face behind it. I want to, people to think mm -hmm. Bansko Lab, it's open source, it's from all of us. I want to do something, oh, I can do it at Bansko Lab. I know for sure I can do it at Bansko Lab. I don't need to, and I just need to check when it's available. So open source, if you have a community and, and try to solve a problem, that's really try to solve um, a problem. And here we're trying to solve the problem with the, with the local community and just the fact that there is not a really a place that is from all of us. That's what I will say about that. Okay. And um, so I guess this is just as you're in Bansko and you've been there for quite a while now. Um, do you know if um, in Bansko, if um, there are places for digital nomad kids such as schools and daycares? Yeah. Um, I There is world schooling that is happening in Bansko right now and they their system is unschooling I don't know a lot about that but I know that that's that's just for um, for kids who travel a lot who 
who don't parents who don't believe in the school system. That is happening in Bansko. I know some international kids who are living here in Bansko and they just go to the local schools in Bansko because um, they are good. And it's a funny fun fact is Bulgaria is known for having an amazing um, school system. Actually, the Netherlands, uh, the Netherlands mostly is targeting developers and mathematicians from Bulgaria because they are so good because their whole school system is based on old school uh, math and they don't, they don't really care if you like it or not, you just have to learn it. And at the end of the day, all these kids grow up being really good in math and really good in programming. So yeah, in Bansko, just the local school is fine. There is some options for, for, for nomad kids, which is the unschooling or the world school, how it's called. And yes, yeah, stuff, I think more stuff like what is happening in Bansko Lab is, is coming up as well. So I think if, if just, if you're here on a vacation and, and you want your kid to do activities, there is, there is plenty of them. Thank you. Um, so that kind of brings us to the end of our chat. Um, and as always, I'd like to ask you one last question before you go. Um, what one piece of advice would you give to other nomads or for those who are looking to start up their own business? Um, patience. I think patience is very important. Be patient. Just do not think that a business, a business is like a kid, right? You just have to, to, to help it grow. And at one point it will take care of you. At least you hope for that, but uh, a business will take care of you if you give it enough uh, patience. Just when I started very young, but I, 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 I was patient because I was living with my mom um, and I had everything there and search for something that can grow, right? I, I'm in the hosting business, which is my clients are five euro per month clients, but I was patient enough to grow a big, um, a certain amount of clients that will keep the business alive. So if you're patient, you have patience and you just know that it, it takes at least five years before, before you are gonna be in a stage where you think, okay, this business is gonna take care of me. Now I can focus on something else. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for sharing that and um, for joining us today. And thank you for everyone um, who joined us and ho I'll hope to see you next week. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.